what is up welcome back to the leviticus rich show my name is lenny richardson uh in this episode this is sort of going to be an off the dome every episode is off the dome for the most part but this episode is sort of going to be an off the dome me just talking about uh some future strategies and kind of trying my best to justify those future strategies um but hopefully there is some um, valuable insights I can provide in this video. Um, so without me rambling and taking too long to get into it, one of the strategies I plan on doing, at least testing this strategy for a while, um, is sort of the idea of not so much saving a ton of money, but spending money quickly to hopefully get a, a good ROI. And for those of you that don't, that don't know what that acronym stands for, it's return on investment. Um, that's sort of the strategy I have in mind. And so just sort of a, I guess a background into why I think I've been thinking about that strategy a little bit more. I think about um, for, the, for the past like 10 years or so, no less than 10 years, but about 10 years, I've been trying to do different side hustles, different small businesses. Um, and I mainly do them not for the direct intent to make money, but it's sort of to experiment. And in a future video, I'll talk about, um, sort of what my philosophy about how everyone should spend their 20s is. Uh, but when it comes to my personal long-term goals, when it comes to my financial goals, at least, um, my idea was to use my 20s to sort of experiment with different ways to kind of make money, what works, what doesn't work. If I fail, what didn't work well? If anything did go well, what exactly went well? Like really analyze all of these things to the best of my ability as much as one can um, for being introspective and not necessarily having someone always watching over you and telling you exactly what's going on. Um, and along the way, I sort of realized that it's almost, at least this is just my opinion, it's almost useless to sit there and try to save money all the time. And I say this to people and they sort of go, well, you need to save money. You need to save money. Money, so Saving money is sort of the catalyst that leads to investing. And I don't disagree with that. However, I do think that depending on what your long-term goals are, it almost makes more sense to just spend money as quickly as possible and as efficiently as possible with the hopes that you make more money in the back end than it does to sit there and really pinch every single penny or just kind of hold on and hoard every single dollar you make. So for example, if you are someone and you make say like $30,000 a year, I think conventional wisdom would say, you need to save your money. You need to find an investment account to put your money in. You need to find a way to multiply your money by having it sit in an account that is interest bearing, that provides compounding interest. And I don't disagree with that. I don't think that's a bad idea. However, I do think in the long run, and again, this all depends on what you want your future to be like. I think in the long run, sitting there, if you're making $30,000 and just saving it, isn't that beneficial. I think if I'm not mistaken, standard, if you put your money into a Roth IRA, it's been proven over the past several decades to give you about an eight to 10% return on your investment um, in the long run. Now, the issue with that is that if you put your money into that kind of account, you're not really trying to spend it in the near future. You're gonna hold on to it in that account for the next 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years, more, more likely 50, 60 years, unless some emergency comes up and you really have to withdraw it, or you really think that what you're pulling your money out is a worthy investment that'll get you a higher return on investment than it just sitting in that Roth IRA. Hopefully that all made sense. But to me, the more logical approach and the faster approach, and to me, the overall better approach is rather than sit there and just save money and put it into an account that'll grow, why not actively initially use all of that money like soldiers in a war almost and put them to work, put them to work, put them to work to make more money, put them to work to go out and get more soldiers, so to speak, put them to work to go out and make more money. And so let me see if I can break this down kind of off the top of my head to hopefully make that more sense with some numbers. Imagine you have $10. I think if you, have, if you listen to conventional wisdom, save your money, so you can save half of that. Say you save $5, you put it into an account, you get, let's say 10%, let's make the numbers relatively simple. You get 10% on your what would I say? $5. You get 10% of your $5. So what is that? Is that 50 cents? My math could be completely off. So if it is, don't judge me. But let's just say you get 50 cents every single year. Okay. So you didn't have to do anything, but you did make 50 cents a year. Fair enough. You know, not too bad. Or my strategy would be you have $10. Maybe take $1, put 
put it in that account? Could you do want to be safe to a degree, but take all of the $9, the remaining $9, find a way to get those $9 to bring back at least one more dollar. So now the $9 you put to work has brought back a dollar. It's more than the 50 cents. And you keep repeating that process. Over time, to me, you'll make more money faster. And the reason why I think that's a better strategy is because the ten dollar, the the five dollars that makes back its ten percent, you're getting say over the course of a year. My objective is that the nine dollars you put to work, you're getting back that extra dollar or more quickly. It's quickly, it's fast. You want to if you can do it in a day, do it in a day. If you can do it in a week, do it in a week, month, whatever. But as quickly as possible, you're putting it to work and you're repeating the process as quickly as possible. So I think that to me that's a better. Hopefully that made sense. Hopefully that's a better long term strategy. I once had a conversation with an old roommate and he was so excited and he was like, Hey, you know, I invest in these, uh, these different companies and they gave me dividends. And I was like, Oh, that's cool. Well, based on what you invest now, how much do you get per year in dividends? And he's like, Oh, I'm investing like a couple, like a couple hundred or a couple thousand and I'm making back like 25 bucks a year. And I was like, it's not really worth it to me. I mean, maybe I'm crazy. Like if I put a thousand dollars into something and got back $25 after a year, I was like, well, you know, I get that you're not spending your time to make that $25, but let's, let's be real. $25 over the course of 365 days, what is that per day? Well, you didn't really make that much. Like, it sounds nice. I think it's a good dopamine hit to say, oh, I made money passively and I put it into account. But it's like, is it really anything to, to write home about? In my opinion, not really. I mean, some people say, well, it's better than nothing. Sure, it's better than nothing. I got it. Grant, I give you that. It's better than nothing. However, my thinking is if you can take that 1,000, spend 500, get back 10%, $50, again, if my math is good, well, you've made more. And hopefully if you've applied what I just said earlier about it, about getting it faster, rather than get that $25 dividend for spending more money over the course of a year, maybe that 500, maybe you didn't spend all five or 1,000, maybe you spent 500, you got back 50, but it took you a month to do it. And then you can repeat that process. So now you compound on that because you because if you if you understand a process or if you understand a system, then you compound on that and then you make the money back faster. To me, that makes more sense. Instead of getting twenty five dollars over the course of a year, you've gotten back fifty dollars each month. Fifty times twelve. What is that? My math is going to be terrible. Six hundred bucks a year, and then the next year you pump in more money. So instead of you doing five hundred, you do a thousand. So now instead of having five hundred or six hundred over the course of a year, you have 1200 over the course of a year, 1200 over the course of a year, and you repeat that process. So you're making more money in the long term, and you know exactly what you're doing to get that money. Or with the dividend, it's like, well, you're not really in control of that. If the company tanks, they're going to be like, fuck you. <laughs> you don't get that dividend anymore. Your money's tied up somewhere else. It's not liquid. You're not using it. It's not going really to work for you. I don't like to, I don't know. Hopefully that all makes sense. I don't particularly like the idea of just saving money. Um, I just find that saving money, and this is, this is, again, this is a front end strategy in my opinion. Now, if you're the kind of person who say you have, you've been like, I would like to save when I'm say 40, when I have a business that's all established, that's all set up, the systems are working smoothly. I know exactly for the most part, how much money I'm going to make, or at least percentage. I know percentage wise, how much this company can make. I know ways to tweak it, where if I do A, B, and C, I can expect to get, you know, X, Y, Z at the end of the year or at the end of the quarter, whatever. It's predictable and it's in my control. I like that a lot more. And then when I'm 40, when I have extra money, then I can take that and put into that account that will increase over time, that compound interest, that nice nest egg to really keep things, to keep me safe for if everything just goes to shit. I think that's a different strategy. And I don't think that's a strategy most people do. I think most people, they hear, save money, save money. I, I hear people sometimes on YouTube, they're like, don't go out and buy a coffee. Don't go out and do this. It's like, bro, let's be real. You're spending two bucks a day on coffee, four bucks a day on coffee. Do you really think that $4 over the course of a year has really saved you that much money? I mean, if you're the kind of person that just doesn't want to work, I guess it's better than nothing to save money on coffee. But I would even almost argue if you're the kind of person that can use that coffee time effectively and you're getting that $2 cup of coffee, but it makes you happy and it makes you productive and it puts you to work and you're getting a lot of stuff done. I know me personally, when I go, I've tried to do that whole cut out coffee. It hasn't, it's never saved me that much money. It's never been that productive. 
Um, and I do find that if I go out, say to Starbucks, and I spend like $2 on a grande cup of coffee, just black, a little bit of ice, because that's how I roll. I find that if you if I do that, I can sit there for like an hour and a half and just be productive and just work. And it, it, I feel like I'm getting a lot done. So to me, it's a better use of time than sitting at home and making my own coffee. Because even though I saved $2 making my own coffee, I didn't get that much done because I'm at home, I'm distracted, I'm on YouTube, so I'm wasting time. So it's, it's I don't know. And to me, whenever I think about time, I always think of time as having, it's to me, it's sort of like if I have an hourly rate that's just static across a 24-hour time span, every activity I do within an hour is me spending money. Say it's $50 an hour. Say I make $50 an hour. Well, if I'm productive for an hour, I'm earning $50 that hour. If I'm unproductive, I lost $50. I can make $50, spend two on coffee. So net 48, or I can save two and lose 50. So it's like, I'm negative 48 now. What's, what makes, what makes more sense? Like just because that money's not in my bank account doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Doesn't mean it doesn't matter. I don't know. That's the way I think about it. I don't want to get too, too ranty or too, um, too off topic, but overall, I, I just think, I think there's something strange. I, I think it's not the best strategy in life to always think about saving money. I think saving money is good to an extent, but I don't think that should be your initial strategy. I think most people's initial strategy should be, how can I make more money? How can I increase my income? How can I increase how much I make hourly or daily or monthly or yearly? I think that should be the initial goal. And then the saving, the investing, that should be the back end stuff. Um, so hopefully that all made sense. I know I was kind of a little bit all over the place with that, but I'm hoping my examples made at least some sense. And hopefully the, the concept I'm, I'm trying to get across made sense. Um, but let me know what you think. As always, leave a comment, uh, share your thoughts. I'm always curious to hear other people's perspectives. I'm not saying I'm right. I'm not saying that's the only strategy that anyone should apply. Like I said earlier in the video, everyone's different. Everyone has different lifestyle goals. And I, I, that, so the whole spending thing is what I think I should do because of my goals. I don't necessarily, for some people that I know who are very conservative and they don't like doing the stuff I like to do, it's not a goal for them. It's, it's too risky. And I think they actually be better off just saving all of their money and not spending much of it at all. I think that's a better strategy. So I'm not saying that my strategy is 100% correct or the best thing for everyone to do. Um, it's just an idea that I wanted to share in this podcast slash uh, video. Uh, so let me know what you think. Um, feel free to reach out by DM or leave a comment. Love to hear your feedback. Um, but until the next episode, peace out.